Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org and this is SiliconAngle.com's continuous coverage of HP Discover. We're in Frankfurt. We're live. This is theCUBE, where we go out, we extract the signal from the noise, we try to find the guests that are really experts in their particular domains. Uh, we, we try to cover this, uh, events like this, like a blanket. We have with us Alistair Veach, who's the um, uh, a member of HP Labs, he's the Director of Storage and Information Management Platforms within HP Labs, and he's been very intimately involved in a couple of innovations, um, notably StoreOnce and Express Query, that have come out of HP Labs. Now, HP Labs uh, has been criticized by a lot of outsiders, and frankly some insiders, as not bringing enough innovation to market that can be commercialized. These are two examples now in very recent history that we've seen, and Alistair, uh, you're involved in both of them. First of all, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, Dave. Great to be here. Good to have you. And yeah. uh, so we're here at Discover, 9,000 people. Um, big event, we did uh, HP Discover in Las Vegas earlier uh, this year in June. Mm -hmm. I guess a similarly sized show, a little bigger actually, uh, yeah. but, uh, but comparable. So um, how are you spending your time here? Are you just meeting with customers? Or uh, meeting doing stuff like this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, stuff like this. Meeting with customers, um, manning the, the, a couple of the booths. We've got some demos here. Um, you know, showing everybody who comes along, our partners, customers, uh, some of the internal sales, you know, how these new technologies work and what's coming up in the future. So in the last, say, 10 years in this industry, we've seen a real shift in the way that large organizations um, mm -hmm. behave. And one of those changes is they've gone out and started making you know, many, many, many acquisitions. HP certainly participated in that mm -hmm. trend, or Oracle, IBM, virtually everybody, EMC. Um, it's necessary, mm -hmm. and a big part of the reason for that is R and D is risky. You know, it's, yeah. uh, <laughs> there's a lot of hit and hope in R and D, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you've got to do it because some of the greatest, world's greatest innovations comes out of R and D. You got to complement that with yep. uh, inorganic acquisitions. Now, as I said up front, you know, HP Labs, there was sort of a gap in some of the commercialization of some of those uh, inventions. Two that are recent, Store Once and Express Query, came out of your group. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about those. So let's start yeah. with Store Once. Um, mm -hmm. where, take us back to the beginning. When, when did you guys <laughs> have the idea? I mean, data deduplication is not anything new. Right. You guys came up with it, I guess, what, a uh, couple years ago? Uh, three, three years ago yeah, with okay. the, the first set of announcements. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, take us back to when you guys started first working on it. Uh, so we probably started working on this you know, six years ago, actually. Uh, yeah. And you know, we were talking with our partners in the storage business, and, and they knew they had to move to you know um, online disk-based devices, basically. And they came to us, and, and uh, talking to them, we had some people who had been looking at different forms of deduplication, and storage of large data, and removing the, the duplicate parts. Uh, and we realized we had a really good match here. So you know, we focused down on that particular research and, and figured out how we could apply that to virtual tape library systems, basically, uh, which is what the store one system is, and figured out what the optimal algorithms were, what the real problems were, and how we could make that the most efficient system that we could. Came up with uh, what we think are some really, really great um, algorithms for doing this. And the, the big advantage our stuff has uh, is that it lets you uh, not only deduplicate the data, but when you come to restore it, for instance, it's many times, you know, five times faster than our competitors on the restoration. You know, a lot of people think, okay, it's just duplicate, deduplication. Lots of people can do that. We do that, but we also optimize for that restore process. And for backup, that's really important. Is a lot of people don't think about now, that. Now, now, is that capability Algorithmic, or is it architectural, or a combination of those? Uh, it's a combination of those. It's it's in the algorithms we use to deduplicate, and then how we lay out the data and how we store it to enable us to retrieve it really quickly. 
Okay, and, and I presume there's patents associated with much yeah. of this? Yes, there are. Uh, uh, <laughs> can you talk about that a little bit? I mean, how many, how many have you filed, or are they public uh, at this point? The, uh, I mean, dozens, a handful? Or? Uh, there's a several dozen, yeah. Several dozen yeah. patents and claims uh, around um, the, the, this All of IP. those core technologies, yes. Yeah. Okay, now one of the other things that HP touts with regard to uh, its, its Store Once technology is the ability to take that technology and to put it in a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. um, so I infer from that, you could use it for backup um, on hardware devices, uh, yep. like you know, the Store Once uh, B60, whatever, 100 it is. But also, you could put it into software in theory. Mm -hmm. You could put it onto primary storage devices. Is that true? Uh, it's so it's more optimized for the backup sort okay. of streaming applications. And but that's because see, of performance? You know, or? Uh, the nature of the algorithms. Yeah. Uh, for you want different sorts of algorithms for primary storage a lot of the time. Uh, uh -huh. But one of the interesting things, you know, you say software. So we've, we've taken that uh, core deduplication technology and we've integrated it into data protector. So you can get, yeah, you know, and so that allows us to get that that really high efficiency, the deduplication, we can do it client side, backup side, we can move that data around the system. We don't have to essentially, you know, rehydrate the data to move it somewhere else. Uh, we keep it in its uh, deduplicated form and, and can do lots of things with it. So I was, I was poking at primary storage before, and I think mm -hmm. you confirmed that you got to have different algorithms to really, yeah not get in the way of performance, really mm -hmm. is, I would presume. Um, but at the same time, I, I, you, know, you see, uh, you guys have had a lot of success in three par with things like thin provisioning, and yes, others have yes. had as well. Um, things like compression and deduplication, mm -hmm. can you leverage what you're doing, the ah. work that you're doing now, and how, can, do you see that going into primary yes. storage? Because I'd like all my <laughs> storage to be more efficient. efficient. Yes, uh. yes, uh, certainly you can, and we are. Um, the, there's lots of interesting things to do there. Uh, you know, the, the thin provisioning that we already have actually buys you a lot. Um, compression is built into some of our uh, systems now as well. Uh, and, and the deduplication opportunities are there. It's just that they don't tend to be as extreme in, a, in advantage in primary storage because unlike backup, you know, you're saving the same thing over and over and over again. There's a huge amount of opportunity in backup. The opportunities there in primary storage, it's just not as much. Yeah, you might get a 10 to one or a 15 to one or a 40 yeah. or 50 to one depending on the, the yes. mix of data, right? Yes. Um, in backup, mm -hmm. whereas in primary, you, you might you'd be lucky if you can get two to one. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. okay, so that's, so the, you're, I think I'm inferring the value proposition you're saying is higher for, for backup. Yes. That's why you started there. Yeah. Let's talk about Exqu Express Query. Can you mm -hmm. describe for our audience what what that is, and then we can talk about some of the yeah. use cases. Uh, so, so Express Query is uh, something we've just announced. Uh, we, we did all the announcements in the last day or so. Uh, and Express Query is a capability in our store all product line, which we've just announced as well. Uh, and basically we're looking at this issue of metadata management in our storage systems. Uh, so metadata is information about the data, and We've been working for a couple of years on the premise that you know, knowing what you have, especially in you know, these big data systems, you've got millions, hundreds of millions, billions of files that you have to manage and f figure out what they are and who touched them and when they touched them and everything about them basically. Uh, and all of that information is metadata. So uh, we wanted to store all of this and then be able to query that information. And we started out looking at, okay, we'll just throw this data into a database, because that's what they're supposed to be good for, and realized very quickly that for storage purposes, uh -huh. a conventional database just didn't cut it. Uh, you know, we found all sorts of performance problems as you tried to scale up to you know, these billions of um, pieces of information about files. And you're also updating it very frequently. You know, you're putting new files into the system or writing to files, changing various attributes, pieces of these metadata. And if you're trying to do queries at the same time with a large amount of information and these rapid rates of updates, we figured out that the conventional databases just weren't cutting it. Okay. So we had to develop our own sort of specialized database technology to store this sort of information. Uh, and then we spent some time integrating it into our uh, product group, uh, the, the new store all product. 
And now we can es essentially keep all of this information, store it very, very efficiently, and query it extremely fast. So, uh, you know, we did a benchmark on a 500 million, half a billion files in a single file system. And, you know, one of the things that, for instance, you, if you have to scan and find all of the files that meet a certain attribute, maybe uh, in autonomy's use case or backup use case, you have to find all the files that have been changed, for instance, you know, in the last hour or day or week uh, since the last time you looked. Uh, or maybe you're a system administrator and you want to find all the files that have been written by a certain user in the past day or week or just all of the files that are greater than a certain size because you're running out of space. And that takes on a, you know, these, these very large file systems, it can take days, literally days, to get a response back to one of these queries. And using the express query stuff, that we get that 100,000 times faster. You know, it's a so second. So 100,000 times faster. I mean, that's so something that takes a half a day to run a job on, you can do in less than a second. I mean, Absolutely, I, yep. I think I got that right. <laughs> yeah, significantly less than a second. That, yep. That's amazing. So, and the enabler there was a combination of things, but part of it was that you developed your own database mm -hmm. system. Yep. What's the nature of that system? Uh, so, it's optimized for, as I said, the, the, the rapid uh, incoming information. And what we do, actually, in a conventional database system, what you do is you process that right then and there, and you know, you're trying to update indices and things like that. Uh, what we do is we actually put a lot of that processing into the background, where it doesn't affect the foreground workload or anything else, or the other operations that are going on in your file system. Uh, and we update everything in the background, make sure it's consistent, and then we make it available to the to the user for query. So, so my my in, I was really intrigued by this announcement, the st mm. the store all announcement generally, yep. but specifically the express query piece of it, uh, because we've been pounding on this th metadata. If we have time, I want to talk to you about that. But what about applying this technology to Hadoop, um, mm -hmm. where you've got you know these big batch jobs uh, that, and and bringing real time to that. That, that environment is very difficult. Is that is there a play there, or is it uh, so oil and water? Uh, it's it's a tenuous connection, to be honest with you. Um, you could use, or you can use, store all quite effectively with um, Hadoop type systems and mm -hmm. data processing, because you know, we have the multiple servers. It's a scale out system, and the data is partitioned uh, sure. across them. Uh, but that, but the, the express query set of features is not something that you generally use in a Hadoop you know, name system. They're sort of taking these large files and running the map and reduce across those files. Yeah, but so once That's I find my nuggets, yeah. right? So I got all this data. Ah, yes. I want to I want to search on that data. Uh, I want to query that yes. data. So why yeah. wouldn't it be Yes, uh, a fit that there? that certainly you can do. And one of the great features uh, that we've put into Express Query is the ability for users or administrators or um, new applications to actually define their own types of metadata. So you can put arbitrary pieces of information in and attach them to your files or directories. So uh, you know you can if you've got an image library, for instance, you might want to tag all of the images with you know uh, this is an image of a fish or a plant or whatever it was or my holiday, uh, and then later on you can go back and search these. Um, another example I like to use is you know imagine a medical imaging um, application. You've got images coming off of an MRI machine, for instance. You might want to tag those images with you know, the identity of the machine, the technician running it, the doctor, the patient. All of that sort of information you can now store into the file system directly and then search it extremely efficiently and retrieve it. Yeah, so now the other piece I wanted to talk about, I think we do have time, um, is this whole metadata piece. Mm -hmm. um, we just put out a piece on wikibon.org uh, around defining software-led infrastructure, yep. and we followed that up with, uh, with the software-led storage piece, but essentially what we said is, look, software-led infrastructure is running services as software on top of commodity and, and standardized hardware. Mm -hmm. Now that in and of itself really isn't new, right? I mean, everybody's been talking about Google doing that right. for a long time now, uh, and the enterprise business is, 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 is now delivering that. What is new, we think, is bringing together uh, silos of metadata that are currently locked into mm -hmm. you know, individual purpose-built systems. Yep. We saw 
uh, express query and, and store all as a way to potentially, over time, enable that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? Um, and and yeah. can you maybe talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So, the, you're, you're perfectly correct, right? There's a huge amount of value locked up in, in, the, in our storage systems just in general, and that information is siloed. So one of the things you know, we're trying to do uh, with our storage business is uh, the, you know, the reduce those number of platforms and the things we can use and build up these, these common sets of things so we can integrate some of that information over time. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take time. It, nothing happens overnight in this business. Uh, but there's a huge potential there for in taking you know, that wider view over all of your information resources. And between you know, now we have um, uh, store once and our new three par systems and, and store all, you know, that potential is definitely there to integrate and, and make those things work better together. So the pressure on HP Labs in general, and I know it's, <laughs> it's almost like an academic institution, there's this hands off, hey, let's, you know, let, let's do something, but the pressure to commercialize the R&D mm -hmm. has been you know, accelerated in the last couple of years. You've got two successes and they happen to be in storage, so <laughs> why? Why is that? Why those areas uh, and, 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 so and why the successes? Well, What's the process that has led to that innovation yeah, um, and commercialization? So yeah, there, there are many actually other successes out of HP Labs. I mean, I'm just representing the storage mm -hmm. uh, the piece here. But those are two but that large, Meg Whitman large, talks about, and you know, all yeah. the, it's not just the storage guys yeah. talking about them, it's yeah. the senior leadership team, right? Mm -hmm. so. Uh, so, you know, what we focus on is, is uh, you know, we're, we're an interesting organization. You know, we, we have this blend of the academic and the business. So we actually do the technology development and we do the research. So, uh, you know, I have an interesting job. It's somewhat like a professor, but it's also somewhat like, you know, a product development manager, engineer, uh, uh, marketing even, aspects of uh, things. Uh, and what we have to do is bridge that gap between the product and the research. So that means that put, we put what we do is we put the teams together. You know, my myself and my engineering team, the research team, work with the engineering team to actually build out these systems, make sure they work, and and you know really work hand in hand to get these things out to market into a product that people yeah. can use and adds value. All right, Alistair, thanks very much. We got the, uh, we're out of time, but I really appreciate you coming on theCUBE and sharing your insights with us. Good luck, congratulations, yeah. and uh, love to have you back sometime. Yeah, thanks, it's All been right, great. All right, there, everybody. We'll be right back uh, with our next guest. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon. We're live, this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's coverage here in Frankfurt. We'll be right back.